once we've removed the broken handle from an axe, the next step is to put a new handle. Now, if you're in the woods, odds are you don't have a replacement handle. However, since this is a beginner's guide to repairing axes, I've brought one with me. This one is made by the same manufacturer that makes this axe head, so it should fit pretty easily. I just want to show you some of the basics in how to do that, in case you want to do it at home. A couple of things to note about the handle. First, examine the grain. Don't make the same mistake that I made. Ideally, when you look at the handle, you have the grain running vertically. This makes for the strongest, most impact resistant handle. You also want the grain to run the whole way to the length of the handle. That is where I made my mistake. My grain actually veered off and that's exactly where it ended up snapping. Another thing to note is this slot in the handle. This is where the wooden wedge will be inserted from top of the eye in order to spread out this part of the handle and keep the head secure. The first thing we want to do when putting the handle is test fit it. So we put it in the eye and push the head down as far as it can go. Now ideally I want it seated right about here where the widest part of the handle is. So it needs to go down a little bit more which means I'll have to remove some wood. Remove the head, pull out the knife and let's get to work. You'll actually notice, once you tap the head in a couple of times, that it leaves a mark exactly where it gets stuck, so you can see the high points on which you need to work in order to bring it further down along the handle. There's much talk about knife technique and how to hold your knife. I'll tell you, once you hang enough axes and you have to work on enough hickory handles, you develop your own ways of holding the knife. Nobody can tell you what the best way is. It's the one that works for you. So let's give it another try. Not bad, a couple more high spots. I could easily cut away and show you the finished product. But I want you to have a look at exactly what shaping the handle entails. A lot of the time important things get skipped over, you get the impression that it's a very easy job when in fact it can be very time consuming. Okay, much better.
what we'll need to do now is take a baton, pound the handle down a little bit just to make sure it's seated well. The next thing is, you see there's quite a bit of wood sticking on top of the eye. We don't need it. We'll have to saw it off about an eighth of an inch above the head. The reason why I like to leave a little bit of wood on the top, it, top is because it spreads out, it mushrooms and it keeps the head from sliding off. Then we'll insert our wooden wedge and hopefully we'll have a finished axe. Now, when doing this, when pounding in the head, a lot of people think that you have to really, really stick it in. They pound it with hammers. What that ends up doing is it damages the head and it also makes for an improper hang. Something you should keep an eye on is the slot in the handle. If for some reason it closes, that means the head is on way too tight. It has to remain open. If it's pushed together, you need to remove the head, remove some more wood from the handle and put it back on. It should fit in just with your hand with a nice tap or two without too much effort. Now let's remove the excess part of the handle. This can be tricky and requires some precision, so take your time with it. And we have it nice and cut off about an eighth of an inch above the head. The next step of the process is to insert a wooden wedge in the slot on top of the handle. As you can see this one is a little bit bigger than the eye so I'll have to trim it down in order for it to work. We mark it. Trim it to fit. Okay. Let's see if it fits. Okay, seems to. Before I put it in, something that I like to do is put some oil on the wedge. If you don't have any oil with you, something you can use is water or pretty much any other type of liquid. The goal here is not to lubricate it or to make it swell. The reason why I'm doing this is to soften the wedge. Typically the wedges are made of wood that is softer than the handle. This makes them even more so. 
what that does is that it allows it to really expand to the contours of the handle once we're pounding it in and makes it hold a lot better. If you really want to make sure it's secure and that that head doesn't come off, you can use some wood glue on this. You don't need to epoxy the whole handle, just a little bit of wood glue on the wedge to keep it from sliding off will keep the head in place for a very long time. Okay, let's get it nice and wet. And put it in place. Going to use the same baton we used to remove the other handle and pound it into place. Don't worry if the wedge cracks, just keep pounding in the different sections until it's completely in, or at least as far in as it's going to go. Now, a problem that I'm encountering here is that I'm pounding this on the ground. As hard as it may be, it still has a little bit of a bounce, so I'm not getting as good uh, of a fit as I could. What I need to do at this point is find a rock or a nice stump to reposition the handle and continue the process. Now that the wedge is all the way in, we can cut off the access. have it, an almost finished axe. One last thing that some people like to do is put in a metal cross wedge, just a small metal wedge that goes in in the opposite direction of the wooden wedge. We just insert it slightly at an angle. It takes quite a bit of force to put it in since I'm not using a hammer here. I'm not going to even try, but it's just something that provides some more security and spreads out the handle even more to make for a better fit. Just something to keep in mind. So there you have it. We start with an axe with a broken handle, we removed it and we've put on a brand new one. We've also looked at how to sharpen an axe to a razor sharp edge and how to maintain and take care of it. They should cover all of the basics when it comes to axe repair and axe maintenance. All that is left now is some a bit more advanced skills and ultimately learning how to use your tool.